In this version of the beginner's guide, what we're gonna do is take a look at the UV unwrapping process. Now this allows us to take our 3D geometry, flatten it out, and then paint or add detail exactly where we want it in a texture. Uh, this is also a great opportunity to review a tablet that Hueyon sent over to me. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, UV unwrapping. So kind of flattening out our 3D geometry so we can paint and add detail exactly where you want it. And this process is used in video games, in simulations, um, movies, anywhere where you need to place a lot of detail by hand or in a specific place. And it's why using something like a pen tablet is um, going to make the process a whole lot easier. Uh, but as we'll see, we don't have to unwrap every single object, you know, because we can stack materials, because um, we can use like triplanar nodes and something like Redshift, we can hide seams and we can get away with some of this um, on simpler objects. For more, more complex objects like a shirt, like a face, where, you know, we're going to need the pattern of the shirt to run a specific way. We're going to need to place the features exactly where they line up on our mesh. Um, that's where UV unwrapping, unwrapping comes in handy. So let's kind of see that process on a few of these different elements here. We'll see the UV maps on some of these other ones as well. And to do this, we're going to switch to the UV edit mode. All right, we'll now see our texture editor, our texture space. This is where we'll see where our geometry has been flattened. And we'll also see how we can save out a template from um, an object like this and uh, save it out to um, something like Photoshop. So let's start with our cube here, okay? First of all, you know, we are gonna be still working in our sub-object modes here. Um, we are gonna have our same selection tools with the addition of our transform tool. So if we want to scale or move UVs in our UV editor here, we can absolutely do that. Now what I need to do first is make this cube editable because it's when you make a polygon object editable that you get a UV tag created and that's where all this information is stored. From here, what I could do is maybe come in here to polygon selection and select my polygon. Now, the default UVW mapping on an object can work as long as you don't do too much to it. Um, that's where we run into problems because all of our polygons are overlapping here. So if I was to save this out and paint on it, I'm gonna have the exact same thing on each face of my polygon, okay? It's also um, going to be important uh, that we understand some of these different options down here because these are gonna really help us for our simpler objects, all right? You know, cubes, cylinders, things that we've modified slightly. As we've done more, that's where we're gonna have to actually use the, the UV unwrap. And you'll see there's a lot of tools here but we don't need to worry about too many of them for our purposes today. Down here, we have the option to automatically um, set up our UVs. And this is gonna be the fastest way to just kind of split everything out and flatten it out. It can work pretty good, especially if you're gonna be taking this model into a 3D painting application or using something like body paint in Cinema 4D um, or Substance. Um, but it, it does have some issues where we still have quite a few seams. And these seams can be difficult to work with in say uh, a photo editing or image ed editing application like Photoshop where um, trying to get things to line up from one polygon to the next can be tricky. Now you can of course kind of come through here, line them up or even weld, right? Using some of um, our other tools here. Uh, but I got the edge wrong. Um, you can see Cinema 4D doesn't do a great job with welding compared to uh, other applications. So I try to avoid welding whenever possible and we'll see we have other ways of minimizing these seams. Um, so aside from automatic UVs, we do have uh, UV packing, which um, will allow or, or tell Cinema 4D to try and fit everything as best as it can in this space. Since this is the space that we're gonna be able to work with, create our image in um, and so the, the closer we get things together, the, the less wasted space we will have. We can also relax or smooth our UVs. Uh, this thing uh, seems to be hit or miss these days, uh, but it can help get rid of some distortion as we'll talk about. We also have some built-in projection types here. Not all that different than what you might see in a material tag, right? So if we come back here, select our material tag, you'll see we have spherical, cylindrical, flat, et cetera, and you'll see a lot of those here. 
So once again, if your object is pretty basic or resembles a cube, a cylinder, um, you know, we're working with a cube here, maybe for the, the bottle, we use a cylinder. Um, yeah, that's what we uh, can get away with. In fact, you know, using a uh, cubic here, and I'm gonna go through and select everything because that seems to work a bit better. And if I'm in polygon mode, I can hold shift and select all my polygons. If I hit cubic two, this is the ideal situation here for a cube where um, pretty much every edge that can be connected is, we have very few seams um, and everything fits into our space here. Ultimately, if you want to see what a texture is going to look like on an object, what you can do is choose the UV map option here. All right now, this UV map will display on our object and you can adjust the opacity here as well if you want to see more of it. Okay, we also have distortion turned on um, or adding some shading here. And so that can be um, causing some issues as well. So I'm gonna actually turn off distortion to help us um, with that. Um, but if you're still not seeing the texture as much as you would like, you can come down here to view and choose configure. Make sure you go to back and that's where you can adjust the UV map to see it clear before we were kind of just uh, adding the distortion on top of it. So um, yeah, we now have this. We can see this a lot clearer. And I'm obviously with the cube, not a whole lot of distortion or something to think about. Now for something like a shirt, you really want to just think of how it was put together, where kind of the fabric and seams are. And I actually already deleted the UV tag from that one, but if we come here and choose the shirt here, you can see that's exactly what we have. We have the different panels that, um, you know, this shirt would have been separated into before it was sewn together. That's another way of kind of thinking about um, UVs is that it's just like if you were to wrap something with um, wrapping paper and then take it off, something like uh, cloth, right? You take it apart into the different pieces or with a uh, head, uh, very much like a wrestling mask that you might pull off and could then kind of pull the stitches out and flatten out. So yeah, actually, why don't we just copy this for later on that, um, well, not quite what I had in mind, but that'll work. Shirt. And let's see another example here, let's say in orange, right? Now this is how the orange is supposed to look, okay? With kind of the cut in half part there. And in ours, what we're gonna do uh, is use a selection of edges to decide where Cinema 40 is gonna cut and where Cinema 40 is gonna place our seams for us. So I can just hit V, select, choose loop. And with this, I'm just gonna want to choose this edge loop that kind of separates the top from the sides here. And then with that, all we have to do is set UV unwrap. There we go. That's all there is to it. If we want to see the distortion, we can go ahead and choose distortion. You can now see that here. I'm gonna try to show you what relax should do. So I make no promises if it will do what I want it to do or what it really should be doing. So I'm selecting all these polygons. You could also select all the um, UVs. I would go to relax and choose apply. And as you'll see, absolutely nothing. You can try changing different modes here. Sometimes that can work as well as unchecking uh, pin border points. Okay. So all those points around the outside, and that can be used to help get rid of the distortion. Didn't do a lot in this case, but that's the general approach. Moving on to say something like the banana here. All right. We can go ahead and select the edges we want. In fact, I've already done that, all right? Or I thought I had, but turns out, oh, I was just in the wrong sub-object mode, look at me. So with this, I tried to think of this like a cylinder and that can help as well when unwrapping this is think of the basic shapes that can let you know where you need to separate things where your seams need to be. So if this is a cylinder, I'm gonna break out the top, I'm gonna break out the bottom, and then I just need to choose kind of one place to separate it so it can be unwrapped. You know, once again, think like wrapping paper, around a bottle, you know, it's gonna to have to start and stop somewhere. And that's what this seam here is doing. Okay, now I added the second one only because this ends up being so flat here um, to, to help separate it. And then once I have those edges selected, I can go ahead and hit UV unwrap. And there we go, everything's unwrapped for me. 
not that bad with distortion. Now, seeing distortion is one thing, seeing it with a texture is something else. So what we can do is either switch on that UV map like we talked about before, okay? And we can see it there. We can see, all right, maybe there is a little bit of distortion, which is where the red is. Uh, these colors do mean different things. Blue means stretched, red means squashed. But another way of kind of visualizing this is with a checkerboard. Now, um, we'll talk about kind of what's going on here, maybe a little bit in this video, definitely in a different video, because this kind of leads into body paint, but it is necessary for saving out a template to a certain extent. So what I'm gonna do is just create a new material and this is gonna be off screen, but from the surfaces um, section, I'm gonna choose checkerboard, go into the checkerboard and just double this up to 20 and apply this to our banana. And now we should be able to see our banana, especially if we turn off our UV map, right? And there we go. Now that distortion doesn't look quite as bad. There's still a little bit there. Once again, I'll give it a shot, but I'm not expecting too much from it where I'm going to come in here and relax. Okay. It doesn't do anything. Can try a different mode and relax. Hey, and what do you know? It did do something. I'm not sure it did something good, but it did something. So, you know, really this relax should kind of smooth things out. Um, if you think, you know, in the normal layout, kind of the, the, smooth brush, that's kind of what it should be doing, trying to even things out a little bit. For whatever reason, doesn't seem to be working for me today, okay? But that's really the basics of UV unwrapping, um, is you know choose your seams, that can take a little bit of practice, um, hit that UV unwrap button. What's good, what's nice about this is, if you don't like the way something looks, you can just you know select more edges and do that process again. And just to kind of show you what um, the head looks like, all right, of course, deleted the UV tag from that, but um, similar type of thing, right? Wanted to separate the bottom, okay? And for the top, you select an edge somewhere up the, towards the middle of the head right there, and just kind of follow it, follow it all the way down. Another common thing I've seen, especially on more detailed models, is to also separate areas around the eyes, areas around the mouth, if I can get just a quick loop there, maybe, maybe, there we go. Um, areas inside like the nose, as well as the ears. Okay, now there aren't great edge loops there. So you could maybe try to, to do this as well, but I can tell you if I hit UV unwrap here, the I end up getting more distortion, okay? So for whatever reason, they're able to get um, things to relax a little bit better. Um, but yeah, that is essentially it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is take our shirt that's already been UV unwrapped, save out this template, open it up in Photoshop and add some detail um, in there. And once again, that's where pen tablets are great because they're a lot more natural than using a mouse. So what we're gonna do is create a new material. I'm gonna go ahead and apply that material to the shirt now. I wanna make sure I have that material selected and I'm in the color property here so that I can click on the down arrow next to texture and choose create new texture. I can choose what color I want. That color will actually kind of update behind our template here as well as on our model. Now what we can do is create the layer that has all these lines, these are UV layout. And we can do that by going to layer and choose create UV mesh layer. And there's a few different places you can actually save this texture out, okay? You can come up here and just choose File, Save, Texture As, and then choose what format. TIFF is fine because it will preserve any layers, which can be important for um, uh, if you've used body paint at all. So I'll choose sh Shirt Color for the name. If I can spell, there we go, save that out. And now I can go ahead and open that up in Photoshop. All right, so what I wanna do now is talk about the Inspiroy Giano a little bit. That is the tablet that Huion was nice enough to send over to me. Now, this video, this review is not sponsored, but I did get the tablet for free, so I wanna be very transparent about that. And I've been using this tablet for the last few weeks, and I've been absolutely enjoying it. I should also mention, I do have an older Wacom tablet or Wacom, whatever it's called, uh, along with a laptop that has a touchscreen and pen. And I gotta be honest, I prefer 
uh, this over both of those. Um, the Giano is larger. The pen itself was a little bit more comfortable, larger in my hand. Um, and because the tablet's always on my desk, I do find I'm using it a lot more than say my laptop or even a, a pen display uh, that I might have to move or pull or, or get out in order to use. Um, the buttons on the side were great. They were very easy to program in the software. If you saw my previous video where I talked about using the Stream Deck um, with Cinema 4D and other applications, um, the buttons on the side here come pretty darn close in terms of the ability to program them. Now, you have to be a little bit more kind of program specific. Um, still though, very nice to have. There was a little screen since this is wireless and Bluetooth. Uh, that I could get some information from as well. And so uh, I can't say enough good things about this tablet. Uh, the product link for it is in the description of, the, of this video if you do wanna check it out for yourself. Uh, and with that, let's get back to the video where um, I'm gonna be using this tablet to paint a little bit and just kind of show you the process of adding detail to our template in Photoshop. Okay, so now we have our template here. We can go through and see some of the types of things we can do. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time painting in a lot of detail and whatnot since uh, you'll get the idea. But we have our template in here and we can start doing whatever we would like. I could bring in say a logo, which maybe that looks familiar. Put that say kind of here. All right, if I wanted to do another one, maybe on the back, All right? Now I'm not entirely sure this is the front or the back, but pretty easy to switch after. Okay, and then maybe add another layer where we can come in and just add maybe some dirt, some grind. Maybe this is like one of those super expensive shirts that, uh, you know, is already dirty, has holes in it, you know, the first time you get it. So um, nothing too crazy here, just so we can kind of see the process, see what we're doing, you know. And wouldn't it be nice uh, if, you know, we had some maybe, maybe some little bit of extra detail there perhaps. Uh, but... That is ultimately all we're gonna do. I'll save this out and we can see how we can bring it back in to uh, Cinema 4D. Okay, just to finish this up quickly, um, you can see that my image already loaded in and updated. If that doesn't happen, all you have to do is click on this down arrow and choose um, reload image or just load it in. And this is also where at this point, you could then create a redshift material and load this texture in here. I actually just have our normal standard material in a sky set up just so we can see the result. And yeah, there we go. You can see it and I'll even render it so we can see it there actually looking pretty good. So that will do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to see, please let me know. If you could do me a favor and like, comment, and subscribe, I would also appreciate that. And until next time, take care.